The oldest house is home to many departments. All investigate a certain aspect of the paranatural world. Some, like those in the research department, try to understand these events. Investigators attempt to locate and capture criminals who abuse these things for their own benefit. Intelligence gathering is another important aspect of what the Bureau does. Before a field agent can respond to a potential altered item or AWE, they must first be discovered. While some automated systems are already in place, there is a small part of this that doesn't seem to get much attention, even by the Bureau themselves. Penny Bartwell is a character mentioned previously on the channel. She was the individual who began the Bureau Book Club. Penny is also the one who propositioned Director Trench and received approval for the Dead Letter Archive. The intention of this department was to collect strange letters that contained possible links to paranatural matters. In her own words, the letters came to us from various places and times, gathered by the Postal Service as undeliverable. The Bureau is the perfect home for them. I realize not all letters contain accounts of genuine paranatural events, but these erroneous ones allow us insight into how the unknown is perceived by real people. Penny set up a system of analyzing the letters to determine if there were any suspected connections to AWEs or altered materials. Employees of the Dead Letter Archive were then tasked with reviewing these letters and verifying their validity. Let's put ourselves into the shoes of the Dead Letter employees and see if we can figure this out. Before we get into it, let's make a quick scoring matrix. Considering how little information we get in the game on some things, a definitive fact or fiction for these wouldn't be fair. Anything that is possible, we will label as such, and anything with zero evidence will be probably false. With how the Remedyverse is, there is no ruling anything out for sure. Each of the letters will receive a true, possibly true, inconclusive, probably false, or false label. Let's go. Dearest Hollywood, Have you ever wished you had an actor who could do it all? Who could be a man or a woman? An adult or a child? A dolphin or a Boston Terrier? Well, today is your lucky day. My name is Gareth Clemens, and I am the world's greatest actor. Not only do I have years of stage experience, but I am an accomplished shapeshifter. Whether you need a misbehaving cat, ferocious wolfman, swashbuckling pirate, or debonair southern belle, I'm your man. Or am I? I will be arriving in town on May 11th, 1971, and will be available for meetings and auditions beginning on the 13th. See you in the movies, G. Clemens. At this point in the control setting, there has been no incidence of shapeshifters. After reviewing the string of all text in the document's ebook, that is the only mention of it. While standard form changing would be hard enough, G. Clemens claims to turn into animals as well. Due to the weirdness of the Remedyverse and the pure potential it provides, this phenomenon is possible, but there is zero evidence to support or to refute it. Dear House of Representatives, My husband, Francis, read an article before he died about how the universe was really just a big computer program. He believed it. I thought it sounded silly, but now I think he was right. Francis was hit by a car a few months ago. A drunk driver. I don't think it was supposed to happen. My neighbor's son, Jeremy, broke one of our windows with a football a week before Francis died. Francis yelled at Jeremy for it. He was a bit harsh. This is important because I see Jeremy on his computer through the living room window. He's on it all the time. His mother says he is a computer whiz. I think Jeremy is operating the computer program and he changed the universe so that the driver would hit Francis. He did it to get back at Francis for yelling at him. Is there a way to change the computer and make Francis come back? I have some money if it's expensive. I don't know how these things work. I don't care if Jeremy gets in trouble or not. I just want Francis to come home. Francis and I were very happy together. I can feel him not being here and I know it's not right. Sincerely, Stephanie Miller. This letter is most likely a very sad look into grief in the denial phase after a loss. Mrs. Miller is clinging to a faint hope that there is a way to bring her deceased husband back. In the past, Remedy has teased this idea. While under the influence of Valkyr, Max Payne received a phone call informing him that he was stuck inside of a computer game, that his world was only a digital one. 
This being said, technically Mrs. Miller's belief that she is in a computer simulation is true. She exists in a video game called Control. In both of these cases, this can be considered a meta-commentary on the nature of video games. Whether they are intended to be lore details is unknown. Because of Remedy's history of breaking the fourth wall, I'll leave this one open. Dear New York Tribune, airplanes aren't real. I figured out how they do it. The windows are TV screens. The whole thing moves on big tracks like a roller coaster that moves through underground tunnels in the earth. Airports are more like train stations. They do this because the sky is full of monsters that they don't want us to know about. The planes we see in the sky are the monsters. The government made the earth trains look like the monsters so they could lie to us better. Don't contact me. Fake planes is fun because the plane we see in the containment sector was transported to the oldest house by underground tunnels. That being said, the writer is very likely delusional. All one would need to do to disprove his hypothesis is witness a plane crash. If these objects were indeed monsters, then when they crashed, there would not be any human remains inside. Man-made materials such as steel, fuel, or electronics would also not be present. Also, those who go onto planes experience changes in ear pressure due to the altitude change. This would not happen if they were only in underground rail systems. I don't know if you can see this, because I don't know if I'm really here. I see a pen in my hand. I see myself, but it's all wrong. It's the wrong angle, it's the wrong me, and it's all green. Look out for the color green. Everything turns green when it's close. Don't let it get too close. Don't let it in. But if you do, no matter what, you do not speak to it. Please. I need you safe, Peggy. I don't want you to end up here too. I don't know where I've gone. The green letter is a good example of a legitimate paranatural experience. It is directly associated with the salt lamp altered item. While full details of what it does are never explained, it does have a psychological effect on the individual who views it. This would give it a PA designation. The salt lamp likely has already been recovered by the FBC and returned to the oldest house. We know this because they directly investigated the item after the Peggy mentioned in the letter called America Overnight. You're listening to America Overnight, now in its 29th year. Or is it? It is, don't worry. Tonight, we're discussing thrift store oddities and one-of-a-kind finds. Peggy's on the line from Biloxi. She and her husband found a beautiful Himalayan salt lamp at a garage sale. Tell us about it, Peggy. I'd heard of salt lamps, you know. Those glowy rocks you plug in. They're supposed to release negative ions. Clear the air. I got one, only four bucks, and I put it in our living room. I thought it would look nice there. It gives the whole room this lovely orange glow. Now this is usually when the call takes a turn. It's my husband. When he's in the living room, he won't take his eyes off the lamp. He's obsessed with it. If I turn it off, he gets so upset. He says it needs to stay on no matter what. Last night, I woke up at 3 a.m. He wasn't in bed. I found him in the living room, staring at the lamp. He was smiling. His eyes were open, but I thought he might be sleepwalking, so I shook him. He just kept smiling at the light. Then, he started to speak. He said, every time a reflection reflects itself, it gets a little greener. I've read that. And then he turned to me. He was still smiling, eyes open. My husband's eyes are brown, almost black. But the eyes of the man in the living room last night, his eyes were green. Sounds just like Decatur. Get everything you can out of her, then call HQ. Peggy, I'm so sorry to cut you off there, but we need to go to commercial. I'd like you to stay on the line, though. My producer, Karen, needs a little more information. Okay? Uh, okay. America Overnight will be right back. Based upon the host's response, the Bureau saw this effect previously in Decatur, Illinois. This suggests there may be multiple salt lamps with the same effect.
Mr. Governor, I called the police, but they never come to my house. I got a problem, and you gotta send folk to fix it. I got my wife, one of them, singing fish on the walls. It's not a real fish. It sings when you hit a button, but it's got the devil in it. It flies around at night and sings devil songs. Says lots of cuss words. The devil got in my house 'cause of the fish, and you gotta handle it. My wife is real upset. When can you come? Sincerely, Dwayne Barr. The singing fish appears to be a legitimate case of an altered item, albeit a low-level one. The image of these is certainly widespread enough to be a host to paranormal forces. However, there is no further documentation on if this item was claimed by the bureau and brought back to the oldest house. This may be another one of the several dozen items that were not mentioned in game. There are approximately 35 items detailed in the game. Since the most recent one discovered is the typewritten page and labeled as the 83rd one, that means there are roughly 48 items that are unaccounted for. This may be one of them. To the good for nothings at the security check, I know you took a part of my brain when you put me through that metal detector. I'm not stupid. I know what they're really for. What I don't know is whether taking a part of my brain causes me to lose my memories or to lose sleep. I've been told if you lose sleep, you lose everything else too. That's where you trick us regular people. Now I don't know which it is, and I can't remember what you did to me, but I can tell you this much: I don't find this funny at all. I want my memories back, and you can be sure the next time I visit the Baltimore Washington International Thurgood Marshall Airport, I will come and find you and make you fix what you broke. Sincerely. Now I don't think I will be signing this with my real name. Like I said, I'm not stupid. You can just mind your own business. Brain missing is an inconclusive event, given there are multiple possibilities to explain it. The writer may simply be suffering from paranoid delusions. However, it is also possible that a metal detector was altered when altered materials were transported through the airport. It is not specified whether this is a handheld detector or a walk-through one. In either case, if there is an altered item at the airport, there would be thousands of people affected. Currently, we only have this one document discussing it. I see three possibilities: either no one but the writer noticed they were affected, others noticed but did not mention it to anyone, or the writer is paranoid and nothing happened. There is no way to conclude either way. I had a dream, and I built the thing I saw in my dream. A machine that will contain God, but not the God you know or the one anyone knows. A new God. This machine will be his body, his heart, and his mind. I made it just like the dream showed me. I used the motor from the refrigerator and the coils from my toaster and the fans plus the timing belt from my car's engine and the wheels from my son's skateboard. God can't move yet. But the dream said he would learn how on his own. This is just a beginner's body, like a baby's, but a machine instead. God only needs a place to start. If you want to interview me, please contact me at the address on the envelope. My phone does not work anymore. I had to use the dialing plate on God. While it may be fun to simply write this one off as the writer interpreting his dreams too literally, there is a real-world example of this exact thing happening. In the early 1850s, a spiritualist by the name of John Murray Spears claimed to be in contact with a group of spirits called the Association of Electrizers. According to Spears, instructions were given on how to develop a machine called the New Motive Power, which, once complete, would usher in a new age of technology and act as a body for God. This endeavor ultimately proved to be unsuccessful. Remedy has a habit of drawing inspiration from real-world stories that are just as weird as their fiction. Maybe in the Remedy verse, Spears really did have an experience, but failed. So the same group of spirits reached out to this other individual and gave instructions as well. If this is the case, the change in design is suspicious. With zero evidence to support this claim, it would be interesting if there was an extra-dimensional entity trying to manipulate people into building it a body so that it can enter this tier of material existence. Despite all the supposition, there is nothing to confirm this one way or another. However, because of the historical precedent, it is possible. I am a plaid suit in a pinstripe world. 
I'm a plaid suit in a pinstripe world. I'm a plaid suit in a pinstripe world. I'm a plaid suit in a pinstripe world. I'm a plaid suit in a pinstripe world. I'm a plaid suit in a pinstripe world. I am a plaid suit in a pinstripe world. I am a plaid suit in a pinstripe world. While this may seem like a joke letter, it is a simple look into the mindset of the writer. This person feels out of place in the world, an exception to the rule of how people are, an anomaly in the system from their viewpoint, a plaid suit in a pinstripe world. That's really about it, nothing weird to see here. For immediate publication, I learned a brand new language. The fish taught it to me. You probably don't believe me, so I will prove it. Hulale <clears throat> Mieti. Jeremela es Wopmeneko. Guido? Kib Guido Ert Ert. Pipo Haramulin, Rec Ibuit 1455. Os Pyrtron Club, Henbut 20222. Quidi we whip. Eolinininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininininini
cat clock appears to be a legitimate altered item that has the ability to hypnotize those who maintain ocular contact with it. In addition, it appears to instill a sense of guilt in the victim, constantly feeling the need to apologize. Based upon the phrasing of the letter, the sender is writing while still staring at the item. The spacing errors with the words and lettering appears to be caused by trying to write while not looking at the paper, their eyes still focused on the clock while drafting it. How the letter was actually mailed if the victim could not break eye contact is unknown. Due to the redacted section, there may be additional information. The oldest house showed no direct confirmation of an altered item matching this description to confirm it has been acquired by the Bureau already. It may still be out there. Hopefully, someone checked in on the individual who sent this letter and broke the hypnotic effect. Otherwise, this event would have resulted in dehydration, then eventual death. Dear elected official, Thanks to the recent smoking ban in my state, I am happy to inform you I will not be voting for you in the next election. As everyone knows, smoking is being banned because the smoke is toxic to the aliens that the government sold our planet to in a secret deal. If humans keep smoking, the aliens won't be able to live on Earth. Our air would be poison to them. If you government traitors can stop people from smoking, then you will get your millions of dollars from the aliens. I have a website. People know what's going on. We're going to keep smoking no matter what. This is a national emergency. Politicians are handing the planet over to alien overlords. We won't let you. We will resist. I will smoke first. Forever. Signed, a proud smoker, rebel, and patriot. Smoking ban is most likely another example of an individual with paranoid delusions. However, let's put ourselves in his shoes for a moment. Under his logic, high population areas would be safer from the aliens than low population areas. Places in the middle of nowhere would be open game for the invasion since there are no people to smoke. A smoking ban would need to be worldwide to be effective and not just in his state. To whom it may concern, I'm being contacted by the past presidents of the United States of America. They appear as spirit guides, giving me their wisdom. John Adams keeps saying I need to fix America, but I can't really understand him. They all have a lot of opinions. People tell me I'm imagining it, but Theodore Roosevelt showed me how to fix my lawnmower and... I don't know a thing about lawnmowers. Explain that! I have great dead men telling me about the past and the present. If you'd like to use my abilities to help run the government, please let me know. I know the White House could use me. Yours in earnest, James Bartholomew. Dead presidents is most likely not a legitimate paranatural event, but it is possible. From a common reading, this appears to be more about the writer. James seems to be frustrated with the way the government is currently running. Through a dream state, a fantasy is concocted using symbols associated with his frustration, the dead presidents in his head being examples of when things ran properly. Possibly the detail that disproves his assertion is the one he presents as proof, that Roosevelt showed him how to fix a lawnmower. How did someone who died in 1919 know how to repair a modern lawnmower in the first place? That being said, there are documented cases of individuals coming out of a coma and having a skill set they did not have before. How this happens is a question that is still up in the air. On top of this, there are things we know but don't realize we do. All of the dates, people, and other historical facts we learned in grade school are largely forgotten by the time we reach adulthood. However, somewhere in the back of our heads that information is still there. Dreams allow us to recall lost information on occasion. With all that said, there is no evidence this is a legitimate experience. Hey, you have questions and the prophets have your answer. If you are truly intrigued, watch the time. We've lost about 45 days in the past four years. The shortening of days, this is why the Vatican is a sundial and also simultaneously a keyhole. Another thing, while I'm here, if you want the secret to everything, compare plasma next to brain cells. The sun and moon are composed of plasma, simply light, not planets. After this is cemented in your psyche, ponder the current whereabouts where you, I, and humanity reside. Cheers! Our whereabouts is a truly befuddling letter in this collection. There is no event to discuss, no altered item referenced. Instead, it appears to be written from the perspective of someone who believes they are an extra-dimensional being. 
the letter being a means of conveying information to someone. The contents are unfocused and seemingly nonsensical. The bit about the missing days doesn't make sense to me, but the comparison of brain cells to the sun gives me an idea. It sounds as though the writer is suggesting that stars are simply brain cells of some cosmic body that spans the entire universe. That all things, including planets, animals, and people, are simply conscious cells that make up this grand creature's body. But let's remember, engaging in the contents is not what we were looking for in this video. Just if this is a real case of paranatural phenomenon. Is this just a person spouting philosophy or a real extra-dimensional entity trying to give secrets of the universe? There is no way to tell. Hello. My feet gossip at night and now I have to wear shoes to bed. Sincerely, me. Foot gossip is very likely the most important letter. One that hides secrets of the entire series. Yeah, no, this person is just weird. Nothing to see here, folks. Dear Science, There's a person in my pet salamander. He has human eyes. Why doesn't anyone else see him? I think it's like werewolves, but with every animal. Where dogs, where cats, where otters, where butterflies, where everything. There are people inside and they can't get out. They're stuck in the animal body. It's not all animals, but it can be any animal. My parents don't believe me. Maybe this has happened before. I thought you would know. Sincerely, John Lemaine. John's description of saying it has human eyes can be taken as one of two ways. Either he meant it literally has the eyes of a human instead of the slitted eyes reptiles possess, or he means there's a soul inside looking out. While this may be the feelings of a child who loves his pet, it is possible there's something more to it. In a random document, there is mention of Sherman Ranch, otherwise known as Skinwalker Ranch. It is located southeast of Ballard, Utah. Down in the investigation sector, it is learned this place is the site of a recurring AWE. There is no information of what happened here in-game, but skinwalkers come from Navajo legend and are said to be those who have gained the ability to assume the form of animals. While this probably has nothing to do with John's experience with this salamander, the idea of where everything is not out of the question. However, it seems rather unlikely that a skinwalker would be a common house pet. The other options would be someone trapping souls of people inside of animals. While there is no history of this happening in the Remedyverse, I wouldn't count out the possibility. It would be an interesting story to have a pet store owner who makes people disappear by turning them into animals, then selling them. Paracriminals come in all shapes and sizes. To the esteemed members of the American Psychiatric Council, I am writing to you to inquire about the significance of dreams in relation to one's mental health. I am aware that there are many books purporting to contain the true meanings of dreams, but I have reservations about their legitimacy. I understand that this is not usually done, but I would greatly appreciate your thoughts on my condition. Ever since I was young, I have had intensely vivid dreams. They only occur sporadically, but in them I witness very strange events. I understand dreams can seem real at the time, but these feel markedly different. They do not occur often, perhaps only one or two a year. Last night, I had one. I saw a small, empty town. It was utterly dark. There was a lake at its center. Shadows of people moved around me, muttering odd things. A bright light woke me up. I was screaming in my sleep. My wife had been shaking me for minutes before I woke. Because of this recent incident, I have decided to seek help. The doctor says I am physically fine, but I wanted to consult your expertise. Thank you for your valuable time. Yours very sincerely, Richard Boker. Vivid Dreams details a legitimate paranormal experience. The small town that Richard Boker detailed is Bright Falls. His reoccurring dreams show the town, Cauldron Lake, and the Taken, aka Shaded Individuals. Even the light that he experienced before awakening is the Bright Presence. There have been other cases of people with minor periutilitarian capabilities having dreams of this sort. Clay Stewart experienced a shared dream state with Alan Wake. Agent Nightingale's partner Finn had them as well until he was taken. Samantha Wells resides in the town of Ordinary and dreamed of both Thomas Zane and Alan Wake. It appears that Mr. Boker is one of the many individuals with unconscious ties to Cauldron Lake. The reason for this is never explained. Before ending this off, I wanted to give a huge thanks and shout out to all the talented individuals who helped with narrating this video. Max Derrett, Monty Zander, and Matt, Jordan, and Eve from Hidden Machine. For those who don't already know, all of them have some amazing Remedy-related content. 
I'll go ahead and link out to their channels in the description to go take a look and give them some love. Now back to the regularly scheduled outro. Employees of the Dead Letters Archive were hired to do what we just did, to determine if these letters were legitimate or not. For those that were worth investigating, they reported to operations so that field agents can look into it. Based upon our analysis, there are a few we can prove, a few we can disprove, and a bunch that we have no way of knowing. All of these are labeled based upon my personal opinion. If anyone disagrees or has other thoughts, please let me know in the comments below. See you all in the next video. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please drop a like and subscribe to receive updates on future uploads. If you would like to help support the channel, a Patreon has been set up and the link is in the description below. Have a great day and peace be with you all.